Church, my name is Hamadi Kichawele Kisato. I am one of the pastors here at ICC Mombasa. And I would like to thank you all for plugging in to this broadcast, for being part of this service today. And before I say much, I would like us to pray and so that we can get right into the service because this is going to be an amazing time to get to learn, to know more about God and why he called us here to Mombasa and why we do church the way we do and who we reach out to. So before much, let us pray. Father Almighty, we are grateful and thankful for this day that you have given unto us to be in your presence, to worship, to pray, to lift up uh, praise back to you, O God. And Lord, I pray every prayer, every heart that is going to be poured out before you today, that Lord, you will meet their need, you will minister to them, O oh God, and you will embrace them, Lord, and they will know that you are with them, that you are the omnipresent God. And before, Lord, we get right into music, O oh God, uh, worship through music, Lord, I pray that our hearts be prepared and be led by the Holy Spirit on how to pray to you, O oh God, in accordance to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And here is the worship through music.
you see the call for that song that have, we've just sung is Sema Neno Moja. And in English, it means just say one word and I will be healed. Say one word and my life will change. Say one word and everything in my life will be transformed for the glory and honor of your holy name. When you see through the Bible, you hear where every time God spoke, something happened. Every time God spoke, even when the, 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 the centurion said, just speak one word, told Jesus, just speak a word. Speak a word and my servant will be healed. It is in the speaking that we are crying out to you, O Jehovah Lord, that you may speak into our situations, O God. That you may speak into our trials, Almighty God. That you may speak into our struggles, O Jehovah my King. That you may speak in our midst of worshipping you, O God. And everything will change. Lord, right now we might be facing anxiety. But when you speak in that situation, Lord, we, lift, we rise up in praise because, Lord, you have spoken and your word does not return back to you void. Oh, God, I pray that you may speak that one word, that you may speak that one word, that every dead situation will arise, O oh, Jehovah, my King, and glory and honor will be lifted back unto you, O oh, Jehovah, my King. I pray that, Lord, you may speak into our situations, O oh, Jehovah, my King. Speak into our situations. Speak clarity in the direction that we need to walk in. Speak vision, O oh God, that we may understand that which we are pursuing in our lives. Speak mission, O oh God, that we may walk declaring that Jesus is Lord, not only of our lives, but people to also experience your Lordship, O oh God. That people may experience your love because, Lord, we need that one word from you and everything will change. Lord, there are many who are watching here right now and maybe they are at a point of distress and despair. Lord, I pray. I pray. And right now, you might even raise your hand wherever you are by faith and trusting that God is going to meet you at that point of despair. He's going to meet you at that point of distress. Maybe situations do not make sense. Circumstances do not make sense. You have been clobbered to a place where you do not know where to turn or who to turn to. But I'm telling you right now that when you raise up your hand by faith, God is going to meet you at that point of despair. He will encourage you. Oh, Rababoshe Karebasete. He is going to encourage you and lift you up. That your situation is nothing before Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, because He will speak in that situation. Oh, church, I am believing and trusting that in that one word that God will speak, because he is of authority, he is the ultimate authority, he is the one when he decrees and declares, things happen, things change, it is law, and that word does not go back to him void, that you will rise up to be the winner and not the loser, that you will rise up to be the head and not the tail, that you will rise up even when situations are trying to weigh you down, even when we are walking in a world where there are wolves in sheep's clothing, we will be able to walk in discernment because we have the Holy Spirit of the Lord God Almighty over us so that we may be able to discern situations. We may be able to have solutions to things that need to change because God would have spoken something into our lives that will transform how we view things, will transform how we view life, will transform how we perceive the newness of things that he brings in our lives. Oh, I pray that, Lord, you may bless each and every one that is here and is believing and holding on to that one word that you're going to speak in their lives. I pray that you will bless them. You will watch over them, O oh Lord, that you will hold them in your embrace and they will experience the love of a Father in Jesus' mighty name, even as they rise up to sing this declaration song. God bless you.
we are back and at ICC Mombasa we believe that worship, that giving rather, is part of our worship and now it's time to give and before the giving details are, are, are going to be brought to us, uh, allow us to pray for the resources that we are giving back to God, our tithes of our offerings, fast foods, uh, be it in missions, whatever designated type of giving you're doing today, let us pray and believe that God will use these resources for his work. Heavenly Father, we pray that everyone that is giving from a place of being led by you to give of their resources to you. God, you will take these resources, bless them, multiply them for the work of your ministry, O oh God. And Lord, I pray that you will also bless them as they give. For your word says, blessed are, blessed are those who give. Or blessed is to give. It is more blessed to give than to receive, sorry. And Lord, I pray, as you bless your people in this time when they give, Lord, that they will see your hand in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Here are the giving details. We would like to invite and give you the opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. All of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now. There are several ways in which you can give here at ICC Mombasa. If you're giving through M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 488-508. And for account you write offering or tithe or special offering or fast fruits or whatever it is that you're giving towards. You can send an RTGS or write a check to International Christian Center Mombasa. Our account number is 100,000 And our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. And finally, you can give through our website at iccmombasa.org. Simply click on the giving button and follow the instructions on the page. Thank you so much for your giving to the work of the Lord. God bless you. We are back here with the announcements. And yes, in our announcements today, first and foremost, we have one of the most important services at ICC Mombasa. And which service is this? It's about prayer. We have the prayer service that happens every Tuesday from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Yes, 7.30 to 9 p.m. It happens on Zoom. More details are there in the description box. And I believe in the course of the service, you will find the details and the contact that you can send a message and they will be able to send you the login details to our Zoom prayer service. And on to the second one is also prayers. We have prayer circle that happens from Wednesday all through to Monday, which, starts, which, which happens on Zoom also from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Please do not falter by not joining into this service because a lot of things happen when people come together, when believers come together in one accord in the name of Jesus to pray. Situations change and many things have happened. Many lives have been transformed. This nation, there are some things we've prayed for and they, they were immediate results whether the next day or that same evening you find uh, a, a result that has happened because of something we prayed because god moves when believers come together to pray on to our is it a second yes our second announcement the first one had but a and b the second announcement is about discipleship we are at icc mombasa have discipleship classes and now we are calling people to come in and plug into these discipleship classes. What do I mean? We have classes that teach us um, on how to grow holistically. That is anchor, how to manage our finances, our health, how to live a healthy life, uh, have, a, have a healthy lifestyle, uh, how to build healthy relationships. Anchor is a class for you, is a discipleship tool that you need for you to plug in. Uh, on to the next discipleship class that we have is working in financial freedom. I know this is where most people have an interest in because they want to multiply their resources, they want to multiply their finances, they want to invest, they want to build wealth. And if you are that one person, plug in, log in, send a message to the number that is running on, your, on the screen and you'll be plugged into one of these classes. We also have intentional parenting. You'd want to raise a godly generation, a generation with a purpose, a generation that is going to surpass that vision, that will outlive the vision for you. Plug in, plug in on how to raise a godly generation. Send a message you'd like to be part of the intentional parenting and more details will be sent 
to you and we have carte blanche writing your freedom story growing up we have a lot of things that happen to us that become trauma um i can say trauma pointers where a trigger here makes us not function fully and walk freely to do things in worship in response to worship to god or in response to the excellence that is required even with our bosses and the authority around us and sometimes we do the bare minimum just to survive sometimes we do mediocre things just to find our place to fit in what if i told you that you are born to live an extraordinary life and the only difference between your ordinary life and your extraordinary is the word extra which comes in when you walk in freedom and cut blanche is here for you to kick out the trauma that that we face kick out the mental struggles that we face from achieving our full potential plug in into cut blanche and trust you me there are many things you will learn that will open you up to walk freely in forgiveness lightweight of the burdens that we carry in our hearts without much to say i like to invite the preacher for the day and uh he's none other than pastor edward munene here he is hey it's good to have you here and i trust that uh, you have had a beautiful service so far on this first sunday of the month of april as uh, you worshiped as you lifted up the name of the lord in praise uh, even as you sang along to the songs and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you uh, to international christian center mombasa and i believe that uh, you have enjoyed yourself it's interesting that uh, today we are gathered together uh, on this uh, platform whether you are on our website www.icmombasa.org or uh, you are on youtube or you are on facebook we are gathering together today uh, to just come back uh, beyond the worship uh, to say here is a commitment that we are making uh, to the divine mandate and call of god over icc mombasa allow me to say that this is a mandate that uh, you know we embrace with everything that we are and if you're wondering today I'll be talking to us about the, uh, the you know what I'm calling our vision our mission and our voyage why because we need to embrace God's call at ICC Mombasa and uh, it, this this is what I'm calling the divine mandate that which God has called us to do and to accomplish and it's a mandate that calls us to be the salt and the light in a world that is thirsting for truth seeking for answers looking for direction and insight and our sermon today is centered on that mission right there uh which is built into the vision and purpose of ICC Mombasa everything that we do now you might be seated there and wondering uh, should i really engage and be part of this service that does it make sense to me and i'd like to say yes you need to stay put and you need to take your pen and paper and uh, you know just go ahead and jot out these notes because i believe that this will bless you i believe that this will inspire you i believe that this will encourage you in fact um you know just uh, beginning at the scriptures uh, because the word of god says that where there is no vision people perish where there is no vision people perish i love a different version of the bible that says where there is no vision people dwell carelessly where there is no vision people dwell carelessly um you know and something else that i'd like to just uh, read uh, for us that that will be very helpful and very engaging is uh, you know some of the other verses that uh, are listed here let, let me read one very quickly for us uh, because the bible says uh, something that i'd like you to engage uh, together with me and be able to look at um, you know that, that helps to be able to build what we are talking about the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse number 40 and 42 Andrew Simon Peter's brother was one of the two who had what John had said and who had followed Jesus the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him we have found the Messiah that is the Christ and he brought him to Jesus Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. Um, and why am I reading that? Because we, we are called as a church to be like Andrew. Andrew hears, you know, John the Baptist speak of Jesus. 
and he immediately goes to find his brother and he brings him to Jesus. Um, you know, he didn't, uh, it didn't matter how Peter was. It didn't matter, you know, his brother Simon. It didn't matter whether he was uh, all cleaned up and all good and all. He just found him and brought him to Jesus because he said, you know what? If my brother just meets Jesus, everything in his life will be sorted out. You know, that, that, that's who we are called to be as a church. Not a people who judge others and begin to say, this one doesn't qualify. This one cannot be a follower of Jesus. This, this one doesn't measure up. No, no, no. We find them and we bring them to Jesus. And the interesting thing is, uh, you know, Jesus doesn't send Andrew to do this. Andrew does it. Uh, you know, he, he hears that this is the Messiah. And Andrew goes and finds Simon and brings him to the Messiah. Uh, what, what does that speak to us about as a congregation? That it's not about being qualified. You know, it's not about being qualified. We may not look as though we are qualified. We may not look as though we are it. And so you might be listening to me today and you're saying, well, all I do is I listen to services online. I am not a follower. I'm not part of uh, this church. Uh, you know, I just stay at home. Maybe maybe you are j just uh, nursing a hangover. Maybe uh, for you, you consider church a place where you stay away from, you know, but you love listening to our summons. Listen to me. You qualify because Andrew was not a, a disciple of Jesus. He was not a follower necessarily. All he did is over here. Did you, did you hear that scripture? Because the Bible says clearly, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who had what John had said and he uh, and who had followed Jesus. And so he had John speak. He followed Jesus. Not because Jesus called him. But then he goes, the Bible says the first thing he does is go find his brother. And so the, this scripture right here begins to lay the foundation of our conversation. Brings us to the place where we begin to say, you know what? Every one of us qualifies. Every one of us can be a follower of Jesus Christ. Every one of us. And our vision at ICC Mombasa is not just a a, a, a statement that we love making. It's a clarion call to action. And we envision ourselves, if I could uh, just very quickly help you here, we envision ourselves, uh, you know, being an English speaking multicultural church that reaches out to the urban based Kenyans, non missionary expatriates, and settlers from around the world. And that's what we see in Mombasa, and that's what we pursue to be even in other contexts. You see, Mombasa is a melting pot of cultures and diversities. And uh, as uh, our vision calls us to the place where, uh, because this is where our vision finds ground. Um, and so our vision calls us to that place where we embrace and say, this is who we are. This is what God has called us to be. And we are going to fit in and do what God has called us to. Now, the interesting thing is uh, using social media, uh, you know, or using Zoom, because in a moment I'll describe our services um, and, and the, just the campuses that we have as a church. We recognize that even, for example, the Internet is a melting pot of cultures. I have no idea who is watching. You know, I have no idea who is watching. I have no idea where you're watching this from. But you fit in. You're part, uh, you know, of this vision because it describes you. It describes you. You are able to hear me. You're able to understand what you're talking about. Multicultural means we have people from all kinds of backgrounds coming together. Now, something very interesting about us and our vision. The population of Kenya is 75% are below the age of 35 this demographic uh, is the reality that underscores the urgency and relevance of our, of our mission and vision. It's a call to us, reminding us of the fertile ground of the, that is there and available and ready uh, for the seeds of the gospel. In the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 22, uh, which the, uh, I'd like to read for us, the Bible says, I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. And this begins to speak to what we do as a church. We adapt, we connect, and we save. We adapt, we connect with people, and we seek to bring them to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because that verse talks about adapting, connecting, and saving. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means, I might save some. And, and I'd like us to unpack our mission. I've given you our vision. I'd like to unpack our mission 
and then we'll continue from there. Our mission statement says, uh, you know, connecting people to God and to each other, challenging believers to Christ likeness, changing the world. And, and in this mission, we find three pillars that sort of uh, prop up and lift up our vision. And they help us uh, to be able to begin to see who we are, connecting people to God and to each other. This is our first call. It's a bridge between man and God. Uh, you, you know, like Andrew, who brought his brother to Jesus. You know, uh, Andrew, he, he brought his brother Simon uh, uh, to Jesus. And we've already read that. We are called to be connectors in the kingdom of God. We are called to be connectors in the kingdom of God. That's what we serve. That's what we do. And not only that, we challenge believers to Christ-likeness. This is our second pillar. We are not just called to connect people. We are called to cultivate, to nurture believers, to disciple believers until they grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter number um, Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 13 until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ that's who we are called to be and that's our second pillar our third pillar changing the world our ultimate mission transcends borders and boundaries it's about instigating change that, that begins to affect communities, that begin to affect cities, that begin to affect nations. Just as Jesus commanded us to be the salt and the light of the world, we are called to ensure that the light of Christ shines into our generation, that we are able to impact and influence people and help them to come to the place where they begin to connect with God. They begin to seek to be all that God desires of them to be. We have a favorite uh, slogan at ICC Mombasa, actually two of them. One of them says that we are an imperfect people who connect or who come together to connect with the perfect God. And the second one says we are a place to belong. Now those two, when you, when you begin to put them together, you begin to see that uh, we admit openly that we have a quest to become who God wants us to be. But we know that we have not yet arrived. Like the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3. Who said I have not yet arrived. I have not yet attained. We do not see ourselves as perfect people. But we see ourselves as people that are being perfected. By the perfect God. He's building us. He's helping us. And that means that everyone is welcome. You know we are like Andrew. Because Andrew did not wait for him to become perfect. In order for him to say I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. We have engaged. He now knows me by name. He has sent me to go bring my brother. Andrew did not wait for that. Andrew simply said, you know what? I've heard John say that this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I need to find my brother and bring him so that together we can go to Jesus. We can be all that Jesus desires. In fact, allow me to say, every time in the Bible that Andrew is mentioned, he's bringing somebody to Jesus. He brought some Gentiles to Jesus who came and asking, you know, whether they can meet Jesus. Uh, Andrew just brought them to Jesus. The little boy who had five loaves and two fish, Andrew just brought him to Jesus. You know, he, he, did, not, he did not begin to reason. This might not be enough. This boy, he, you know, he, he did not reason. He just brought him to Jesus. And I love asking, what was Andrew doing discussing with the little boy about his lunch? How did he know he had five loaves and two fish? But what we begin to see is that Andrew was a connector. Andrew was a connector and as a church we want to be connectors and I challenge you and simply say wherever it is that you're watching this and following this from can you commit yourself and say I shall be a connector I will connect people to God I will bring them I will seek to cultivate in them so that they can mature and grow in the faith and if you're not connected you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you can get connected today you can come to the place of believing and saying God I want to know you and live my life for you and so that's what our uh, our slogan talks about imperfect people imperfect people we have our struggles we have our challenges but you see ours is a story of grace we are not a perfect church, but we are a, ours is a story of grace, is a story of redemption, is an ongoing you know, transformation. God is at work in our midst. God is at work in our midst. It's the story 
of uh, the lost sheep in Luke chapter 15, verse number 3 to verse number 7. And I'd like to just read that very quickly because this is a story of every one of us arises in Mombasa. The Bible says in Luke chapter 15, verse number 3 to 7, then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. And we recognize that at ICC Mombasa, we are those who need to repent. We come before God and we repent before him and he begins to build us and to help us to become everything that he desires for us to become. We do not see ourselves as righteous people who don't need the Savior. We are imperfect people who daily are connecting with the perfect God and that perfect God is, is perfecting us and building us and helping us become all that we desire. And so if you see yourself as an imperfect person, I'd like to say to you, you fit in right in this congregation because we've seen God break addictions in people's lives. We've seen people come as part of ICC Mombasa with their, uh, their sin, their shame, their troubles and their challenges. But God has begun to build them and to grow them and to help them become everything that he desires because God doesn't call you know, the perfect people. He calls the imperfect and then begins to perfect them to build them, to transform them, and to change them so that they can become that which he desires. And so I'd like to just say openly, we are the lost sheep that the Lord has found and is carrying home. We are on their shoulders. You know, just pause for a moment and realize something. The 99 sheep were not carried on the shoulders of the shepherd. It's the one that was carried. And we are excited that God carries us, but we are not the only ones. He wants to carry you so that uh, he can take you where he desires. L let me just uh, make an invitation here. I need you to meet Steve and Stacy. I need you to meet Steve and Stacy. You see, Steve and Stacy, these two people, they symbolize the vibrant yet untapped potential of our youthful population in Mombasa, in the nation of Kenya, and even across the nations of the earth. Steve and Stacy are the faces in the crowd, the unseen in the multitude. And everything that we do as a church, our services, our programs, our outreaches are meticulously designed to be able to reach these two people. Everything that we do, we, the goal is to reach these two people. It resonates you know, with them. And it's the reason why we do things the way we do them. It's the reason why we do things the way we do them. The reason why we are doing this service, in, you know, differently. Because uh, in other contexts, it would be a stream of the service itself. But at ICC Mombasa, we design a service specifically for you. Why? Because we see you. We see you. We see Steve and Stacy. We seek to communicate a message where we are not in involving you. You're not part of the crowd. And so unseen in the crowd, you're specific. We can see you. We can identify you. And uh, it's not just uh, in this uh, particular service, you know, on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, uh, on our website. We do a service every Sunday, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. On, on, on Zoom. And we invite people into that platform. And uh, we are going to put uh, our number on the screen. If you want to transition uh, from this service to be part of uh, the Zoom campus, as we call it, then you are highly welcome. Not only that, we have a campus that is launching today in Nyali, in Mombasa. And that campus, we are calling it LifeGate Campus. And uh, it's, our, you know, it's, it's our seeking to ensure that we, are, you know, we, we open up and uh, we are able to reach and engage with Steve and Stacy. We have a campus that meets every Sunday um, you know, at uh, KPM Baraki Sports Club. On the island of Mombasa and so Nyali campus LifeGate campus is in Nyali which is in the, in the north of Mombasa and uh, and uh, you know KPM Baraki is on the island of Mombasa but you also have a campus in Likoni at a school called Destiny school, Visionary School and we call it Destiny Campus now the services uh, are as follows KPM Baraki meets at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, to 10 45 
and our service in Nyali is from 11.15 to 1 p.m. And our service at uh, Destiny Campus is uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And I'd like to just say a big welcome. You can be part of any one of those services. Or you can stay here and be part of our online stream. Our online stream on YouTube, Facebook, and on uh, our website. Now, why am I giving you this? Because the goal, everything that we do as a church, is to reach these two people that I told you about, Steve and Stacy. Stacy is 29 years of age. She's uh, upwardly mobile. In other words, she wants to get promotion. She wants to grow. She wants to make money. Her goal is to live the good life. She has uh, several boyfriends. She thinks church people are ignorant and uh, do not know much. And uh, she's not a church goer, so to say, but she's a party goer. She loves the good life, as I said. She can do anything to get promotion. We want to be able to reach uh, Stacy. We want to be able to reach Stacy. Steve is upwardly mobile also wants to live the good life he parties all the time uh you know and uh, if you're looking for him you will find him in the party dance drinking clubbing having fun and uh, we want to reach him also uh we want to reach him also because we believe we believe that steve and stacy need to know jesus christ they need to love him and live for him even though they think church people are ignorant and uh, do not have much knowledge uh, allow me to say that uh, we do not give up on them and so everything that we do we seek to reach out to these uh, dear ones our engagement with people like steve and stacy is not accidental or incidental it is intentional it is strategic it is christ-centered we are called to emulate jesus who reached out to the marginalized and disenfranchised he went after them he offered them hope he offered them love and he offered them a new beginning and we seek to bring the same to stephen stacy now we are beginning a campus in nyali today and we are beginning a campus next month in muatate and it's the reason why we have the campus in Likoni and we have the campus on Zoom. The goal is uh, very strategically taking a leap of faith towards fulfilling our God-given mandate to go and make disciples of all nations, to go find Stephen Stacy and bring them to the place where they have a relationship with Jesus. And, and uh, you know, remember our mission, connecting, challenging, and changing. And so we seek to expand our capacity to be able to do this, to be able to connect people like Stephen Stacy to Jesus and to each other so that they, that they begin to live their lives fully for God. We challenge them. We begin to cultivate them so that they can grow in their relationship with the Lord. And together we become a NAMI that changes the world, that changes our communities, that impacts the people that we relate with. We don't believe in just being uh, nice believers who show up in the office and don't interact with anyone you know, with folded hands. We walk like uh, we just want to be righteous, ju just walking around. No, no, no. We, we believe in getting engaged, you know, connecting, relating with people, bringing the love of, cre uh, of Christ practically to the people around us. Sharing, you know, engaging, loving on people. It's a reason why we do the classes that we do. For example, Anchor that seeks to teach people, you know, how to live a healthy life, how to be able to relate well with other people, how to have a dream and a vision that they're pursuing, pursuing and, and going after, how to have a good relationship with God, you know, where they get to know God. And we talk about finances. We teach people how to get out of debt, how to live, you know, with, with focus, with drive, with commitment so that they can honor and glorify God. Why do we do this? And we also seek to teach them, you know, to, to know who they are, who God created them to be so that they can honor and serve his purposes. Why do we do this? Because we want to change the world. We want to change the world. You see, friends, each one of our campuses, each one of the people that we reach out to becomes a lighthouse our campus is actually a lighthouse where the light of christ shines from the believers because we are the light of the world 
and we are able to guide those who are lost to safe harbor. They can be able to navigate. And uh, I don't have the time today to talk about our discipleship voyage, but allow me to say we have a discipleship voyage where we say we'll reach you in society, regardless of where we are, and we'll begin you on a journey of transformation, taking you through our services to a, an island we call Inspire Island. From Inspire Island to Investor Island, from Investor Island to Influencer Island, from Influencer Island back to society as a transformative agent. That's who we want you to become. There's a place we want you to go. Because you see, at ICC Mombasa, we don't believe that Pastor Monena is the one who is called of God and everyone else is just as a spectator. No, no, no. Here, you're not a fan of Edward Monene. Together, we are the army that God wants us to be and be able to touch and impact and influence our cities, our nations, our continent and far beyond. Because you become the influencer, the radical influencer who goes into society to bring change. Because you know what? We are world changers, connecting people to God and to each other, challenging believers to Christ likeness, changing the world. You stay here, you become a world changer. We will do everything that we can to ensure that you become that. You see, in this mission, each one of us is a key player. Each one of us, you who is listening to me, myself, the team at ICC, our pastors and all, we are, each one of us is a key player. Whether through prayer or service or giving or witnessing, we are workers in God's vineyard. We are called to labor until the harvest is brought in. And so I invite us today, I invite us today, as I close our sermon for today, to come to the place where we embrace this church we embrace the mission we embrace the vision we embrace even our strategy you know of reaching Stephen and Stacy we embrace our voyage and say I want to go I want to be able to embark on that journey through the services I want to arrive at Inspire Island I want to get to Investor Island I want to get to Influencer Island because I want to become that influencer that world changer so that I can be involved in that which God is doing are you ready are you ready to commit to this church and say I consider ICC Mombasa my church I consider ICC Mombasa that place where I belong because I am making an open invitation you know because uh, especially on Facebook and YouTube you are a follower you watch but we don't know who you are we don't know where you are I'd like to ask you today to go ahead and con go, you know connect with us communicate let us know send us an, a, a message you know using our church number or using our email and just say or even just just write, uh, you know, make a comment down there and simply say, I am committing to this vision. I want to become that world changer. I want to become part of uh, the key players that are helping to ensure that we connect people to God and to each other. We challenge believers to Christ like this and we change the world. Whether through online uh, services or through the campuses I've mentioned, this is your invitation that you would buy in, you'll be sold out and you will say, yes, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's embrace what God has called us to be. Let's say, you know what? I am the sheep that Christ is carrying on his shoulders. And I want to be involved in, in, in getting other sheep and bringing them in. You see, Jesus says in the, in, in, the book of Luke, uh, in, in the book of John chapter 10, he says, other sheep I have that are not yet in this fold, I will go get them and bring them in. But later on in Matthew chapter 28, uh, he, you know, he says, go ye therefore unto the whole world and make disciples. What is he doing? He is sending us to go get those other sheep and you and I need to become those sheep that are sheep bringers. Those sheep that are sheep bringers. I, want, I, sign, in, I sign up. I am part of this. I want to be involved in reaching Stephen Stacy. I want to be a connector. I want to be like Andrew. I want to be involved in seeing lives changed and people, you know, just uh, that their lives transformed. And I invite you to be part of this. Let us be the church that not only stands in Mombasa, but also, also stretches across the nation of Kenya. And, and we stretch our hands beyond, even into the continent of Africa and beyond. Let us, uh, you know, just embrace this vision. Let us embrace this vision. And hold on to our mission and say, God, do with us whatever it is that you desire. Bring us into the fullness of the things that you have ordained for us. As I bring my sermon to a close, Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9. 
The Bible says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And so I call us today to engage together for the reaping of the harvest. And we will choose not to give up, not to quit, not to be weary, but to keep serving and loving and living for God. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to pray for you and just tell God, God, inspire this dear one, encourage this dear one, and together help us to be and to do that which you desire. My God, in Jesus' name, I know there are people listening to me who deserve to be called like Andrew went and found his brother. And I pray that you will bring them to yourself, that Lord, you will change their lives. You will convict them of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And uh, Lord, help them to commit their lives to you. There are others who are like Andrew. They have had the call. They are part of following our services. And today, maybe they are at the place where they are saying, you know what? I want to be sold up to this vision. I want to buy in. I want to be involved. I pray that, Lord, you will stir their hearts. And together, you will unite us to be the church that you want us to be. A church that shines your light. A church that seeks to connect people to God. Oh my God, Steve and Stacy, the downtrodden, the unseen, the unwanted, those that are regarded as though they are sinful and not worthy to be part of church. I pray that you help us as a congregation to be able to reach those together and to see their lives change for your glory and praise. Father God, I pray that there will be so, so uh, much conviction today across the, the ICC campuses, ICC Mombasa campuses, campuses that there will be, so, uh, be commitment and dedication of saying, we will do this together. Like the men in the days of Nehemiah who said, we will build, let, uh, let us rise up and build. And I pray that together we will touch the nations. Together we'll bring change and transformation. Together we will accomplish your will. And so help us, Lord, for we trust in you and we commit ourselves to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you, my brothers and sisters. May the Lord minister to you. And I pray that indeed God will stir your hearts and quicken you. And as you communicate and get back to us and say, I am committing to this vision. Here is my name. Here is where I live. Allow me to say we'll get back to you because we are putting together ways and means to ensure that we offer pastoral care and ministry. And we are available for you regardless of where you follow our services from. And so go ahead, communicate with us. Let us know you and and we would love to just uh, get connected together with you. As I said, we have you, we have this service that uh, runs online on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube and uh, on our web website. But we also have uh, our campus that operates on Zoom. We have, uh, you know, a service, uh, you know, a campus that operates at uh, out of uh, KPM Baraki Sports Club. We have a campus in Nyali and we have a campus in Likoni. Choose one. Plug in and let's do life together. Let's become the world changers that God has called us to be. I love you people. I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Have a beautiful and amazing rest of the week. Bye-bye.